Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back. Uh, I believe this should be episode six. And uh, hey, look, I got a new shirt. So yay, since, uh, since the time we have uh, been doing this, I finally went out and got a second shirt. So now you get to see me in my second shirt for uh, probably the remainder of these episodes. Um, now, since we are back and it did take me uh, a while to come back here, there's, there's a couple things I want to point out. Um, first, I don't know if you saw this email, but um, at some point, uh, I, you're, you're probably going to get an email that says, hey, make sure you upgrade to the latest Firebase tools uh, in order to keep using any callable cloud functions. Um, the reasoning has to do with sort of some security stuff that the cloud functions folks are changing and the Firebase um, CLI folks are changing in response to those changes. Um, long story short, make sure you have at least, I think, version 7.7.0 of the Firebase tools. Let me see what Firebase version I have here. Do, do, do. All right, so I got 770. Make sure you have that, at least that or later, or else like when you try and call your callable cloud functions in the last video, it's not going to work, and you're going to like complain to me in the comments and stuff. Second thing I want to point out is that uh, since we kind of took a little break since that the last episode in this one, or at least I did, maybe you're just binge watching these, um, we have to remember to restart the emulator. So I'm going to go in here into uh, my command line, and I'm going to type uh, Firebase emulators colon start. Is that the right command? It is. And it's going to start up, again, both sort of the local server and the local cloud functions, as well as the local instance of Cloud Firestore. And you have to remember that um, in the local, when, when Cloud Firestore starts up again, it basically starts up empty. So all those restaurants I had before, all of sort of my, my user preferences, all that stuff is probably gone. Um, and so because, remember, right now we're sort of hacking in our array of favorite restaurants, I need to make sure that that is still going to be up to date um, or at least reflect some accurate restaurants um, when I go ahead and start doing that within my web app. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my uh, browser here and let's look at localhost 5000. As you can see here, I have no more data because, you know, my local Firestore has been deleted. Let me uh, click add mock data. And now we got a whole bunch of data. All right. Um, but let's see. I'm going to check two things here. I'm pretty sure this is still the same user ID. So that has been retained from session to session, as, as it should be. But it does look like uh, I no longer, my, my array of favorite restaurants, like if we jump into, I believe it's under Friendly Eats Data. Remember how we sort of hacked in this favorites array of like totally fake data? Well, basically, this now reflects restaurants that no longer exist because we had to regenerate that entire list of restaurants. Let me pick two that look good. Let's pick these two with the, the chef-looking guy. So we got place best. I'm going to basically just go ahead and sort of copy those constants into here. And drive through fire. Let me copy that into here. We'll save this. Let's go ahead and sort of reload our front page. And now I think if everything is still working the way it did before, if I click on my favorites, we're going to take a look at our favorites array and we're going to get back. That's right, this JSONy looking object that has our two favorite restaurants, looks like Place Best and Drive Through Fire as, as our favorites array, and we get that back as JSONy data. So, yay, uh, I'm back up to where I was in the last video. Um, like I said, if you're, you know, if you were just sort of binge watching these, then you probably don't have to do this. But if at any point you're like, all right, I'm done for now, I'm going to control C out of these emulators and get back into my app, um, you're going to have to do this too. So um, turns out that for most users, getting to see data in like the JavaScript console is not the right approach. They actually need to sort of make some changes in our web page. So let's get this data and actually get it showing up into our app. Um, now, as you recall, what we're getting back from our cloud function kind of looks like document data, but as far as our sort of local code is concerned, it's not a document. It's not a Cloud Firestore document. It's just a bunch of JSONy data, but that's okay. We're going to show you how to sort of take that JSONy data and basically sort of turn it into, again, another restaurants list. So let's jump into our code here, and I'm going to go under my Friendly Eats view. So I have this function called view list that you can see right now takes sort of the, the list of filters and a filter description and goes ahead and generates this whole page of, of restaurant um, tiles, panels, or I guess cards is what we call them. Now, I think probably what I'm going to do here, and this is a little bit of a hack, 
is I'm going to go ahead and copy view list and basically turn it into another function that's called view favorites. And then once I have this all sort of looking nice, um, or at least working, then I'll figure out how to sort of combine them and remove all that duplicate code. But for right now, kind of a bit of a giant hack where there's going to be a lot of duplicate code in our app, and you know we'll fix that at a later point. So let's see here. Let's go ahead and we're going to create this thing. We're going to call it view favorites. We don't need whoop, we don't need our filters or a filter description. Basically, we'll just say our filter description here is. Uh, We'll call it my favorites, my favorite food, your favorite foods. At least for now, we're only looking at the foods of the currently logged in user. Um, doo -doo -doo. Oh, all right, it's probably, there we go. It didn't like the fact that I got rid of that second parenthesis. The next thing I'm going to need to do is probably go down here, and it's going to complain because um, I no longer am passing in filters, so all this is going to be broken. And I'm no longer going to be getting all restaurants. I'm going to probably want to call this like get favorites. And, and there you go. So the way, for instance, um, this get all restaurants call works in sort of the original function is we create this whole uh, other sort of helper function called render results that takes in a document and then basically, you know, does a whole bunch of stuff. This code actually is all basically what to do if there is no data in our results. Um, and then this basically sort of takes that data, massages it a little bit to what we need, and then sends it off, or basically then sort of creates this restaurant card out of, out of that data. Well, that's, that's kind of mostly it. And then sort of adds it into sort of our main page. Um, and uh, then this sort of stuff basically just kind of adjusts the way our filters look. So we're kind of going to do the same thing here. We have this re render results function. Right now it's expecting a document, but I think we can basically change that so that instead of expecting a document, it will go ahead and uh, expect a, like a, a JSON-y looking thing. First thing I want to do is, well, let's see. Let's go. Let's, let's just kind of go through this top to bottom. So this query selector that says, hey, let's look at your favorites. Most likely when we're looking at our favorites, this should now be something like, uh, let's, we should stop viewing favorites. Um, we'll figure out what to do here in a bit. And, you know, let's just kind of try this and see where we're at so far. All right, so our main page of looking at all documents, that still works fine because we didn't really mess with that. I'm going to click on this. And well, actually, I guess nothing has really happened because we are not calling this function right now. So uh, maybe let's do that. Here, we'll replace get favorites with view favorites. You'll notice that there is kind of a view favorites and a get favorites. The get favorites is actually the call that talks to the database. Um, the view favorites is sort of the call that actually makes it display in our HTML. So. OK, there we go. So now I am clicking on it. It's calling our view favorites call that has essentially cleared out all of our, all of our data. And it's kind of started the part of fetching our restaurants. But I actually think for starters, our restaurant is not even looking at this render results function yet. So uh, that's why we're getting nothing. So um, let's fix some of that. We can go into our get data function. And get favorites looks like, yeah, see, it's a function that then kind of just makes this call to our cloud function. If we were to look at, for instance, get all restaurants, you can see here it's actually kind of calling this render function a little later. So let's do some of that. So we're going to take a function that's called render. And within here, sure, we can still log our result, but then let's call render on our result. Or you know what? Sorry, our result here. What was that noise? All sorts of weird stuff going on in the studio. So I take that back. Our result, as you recall, is actually an array of objects. So what I need to do is let's take our result.data and we'll call for each. And in here, we're going to get a restaurant. 
they spell restaurant right? Looks like I did. And now we'll call render on that individual restaurant. All right, so we're making some progress here. Our get favorites call is actually going ahead and uh, rendering our restaurant. But I'm pretty sure if we were to reload this and run it, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna run into problems because the uh, render function that we have copied and pasted is basically still kind of expecting a a document and it's hoping to be able to call you know data on it. And as you recall, we just have JSONy stuff. So let's go back here and fix this. So just to clear things up, I'm just gonna instead of calling this doc, I'm gonna call this data. And we'll sort of replace it in places where it causes trouble. So basically, all this is like it's basically saying, hey, if for some reason I'm not getting data back in, um, you know, my restaurant, in my my get restaurants function, all of this really just kind of shows like, uh, hey, you have no restaurants result. That's all it does. So I don't really need to call data equals dot dot doc dot data because we, we already have the data. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this. And uh, here it looks like we are grabbing our document ID and storing that. Um, and we do kind of need that so later on when we want to sort of have a link that goes to that specific restaurant's details, um, we know where to go. But I don't think we have that right now. So maybe we need to update our cloud function. Let's see here. So here we are. We've got our we're taking our snapshots and we're returning our snapshot data. I think probably what I need to do here is let's expand this a little bit. Let's see. We're going to say, uh, how about let's const snap data equals snapshot dot data. And then what we can do is like snap data. And here we're sort of, this is, there's nothing um, special really about this sort of field that is called period ID in quotes. This is basically just sort of a, a special thing that we added with the assumption that like we're probably not going to have a lot of fields that have a dot period um, at the beginning of the name. Therefore, it's probably safe to kind of you know overwrite or hard code in, in, the, in our code here. And this will actually be our snapshot dot ID. And uh, why is this giving me an error? Because object is possibly undefined. Um, we'll need to return data, snap data. What should we do here? I suppose what we should do is let's just, um, we could force unwrap it, but you know what, let's just say if snap data, then we'll do this and return that. I think we might need to be smarter about this. I'm gonna put in a little to do here or something uh, to do. Make sure we're not completely broken if a snapshot is null. We might be sort of making some assumptions that we're always going to have data that might cause problems later on. I'm just going to add a little reminder myself of, ah, let's go back and double check that this all works. But all right, we got our document ID for now. So uh, should be pretty simple here. Let me go back into my, um, am I in the right place? Go into functions and call npm run build. All right, that all looks good. And in fact, you know what? Let me just reload this and see what happens. Still an error, but this time now I bet you in my array. Now oh, look at that, we got that dot id field. All right, so that worked. So now I think it should be fairly simple to sort of uh, fix up our render call. So we actually don't really need data.id equals doc ID because this is basically this is already included in our cloud function. So I'm just going to kind of uh, going to delete that. Um, but we do need to now call it here. So you know, let's just say const doc ID equals data.id, and then we'll call doc ID here. And let's see. And then I think we can also just swap in that constant here as well, doc ID. And the rest of this looks like it should just kind of work. All right, well, let's try it. I'm gonna reload this, click my favorites. Hey, look at that. We got like 
data and stuff, and it's our, it's our favorite restaurants. Wow, that was, and actually, I think I could still like click on this, and I get details about place best. Um, should we add some ratings? Let's add a couple of ratings. Oh, that's right. Oh, there we go. That's cool. All righty. Let's double check one more time. Whoops, I don't want to add a filter. I want to get my favorites. And there they are. Cool. All right. Um, how are we doing on time? How much time have we got so far? 14 minutes. All right, you know what? We got time to do a little bit of refactoring. So uh, let's do some of that. All right, so there's a, a bunch of places here we sort of have some, some duplicate code. I think one thing I kind of want to extract is this bit here where we're sort of rendering a restaurant. Um, so let's see here. All right, let's create a function call. We'll call it friendly eats dot prototype dot render restaurant card. And we're going to pass in, it's going to be a function that's going to take in like, I think we're going to need a reference to this main element so we know sort of where to put our restaurant card. And then we'll pass in our data and our doc ID as two separate arguments. And then I think what we can do here is let's look at this. So we're creating our function to go to the restaurant. We are checking to see if the restaurant card is, already exists. We're sort of adding in our ratings and the price. We're adding that on, and then we're basically appending all of that to our main element. So you know what? I think I can just cut this, paste it in here. And now, Whoops, I think I actually don't need that anymore. This can now be this, that can now be this. If this were any other language, that would sound very confusing. But it probably still does. But yeah, now our, all of our that's can be this again. Double check my note. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Let's see, is that all work? It might. And so now I think we can just call this function from up here. So we're going to say that dot render restaurant, render restaurant card, and we're going to pass in the main element, the our data, and our doc ID. And uh, well, let's see if this works. Let's reload this. Hmm. Seems to work, except we're getting a cannot read property router of undefined. Oh, huh, this is another that is this error. Um, basically, router here, uh, I believe, refers to sort of the, oh boy. <laughs> Essentially, I think this is another that is this, where this function now, um, this has no longer defined to sort of friendly eats, um, the larger friendly eats object. I think it's sort of a, a local this um, basically representing the closure in this function. Like I said, this is not stuff I'm like super expert in, but basically I think this can be fixed with a var that equals this. My gosh. And then I think if we just have that router navigate, this should all work now. Let's try that one more time. So I click on our favorites. I see drive through fire. I click on that. We can get to details about drive through fire. All right, looking pretty good. So that seems to be working pretty well. So you know, let's double check and make sure we can call render restaurant card within our view list. Basically, we're going to replace all of that with main element data and doc dot id here doc id is not a separate variable. And I think it should all still look good. So let's reload. Looks like our main page is still rendering OK. Um, so yay, we, we refactored a little bit. Honestly, you could probably see how we could sort of do a little more refactoring that you know, does this repeated times, right? Like maybe we decide that this is probably a function that could be you know, extracted, a you know, show empty state function. and Probably a you know show the main header function 
and you know show the filter description function. And I actually think probably the right thing to do would be to um, keep extracting sort of chunks of logic out of this view list or view favorites function into smaller functions and then just kind of have them called from both of these. That's the right thing to do, but I'm going to do the lazy thing, which is like, I think at this point, these functions are similar enough that I could probably just add in a like is favorites argument into my main view list and kind of do a little bit of if then statements all over the place. And that'll get us there as well, just because, you know, this is really this is not necessarily a video about refactoring and chopping up your functions into lots of little ones, but I'm pretty sure the, uh, who's that author? It's not code complete. I don't know, there's an author who would be very proud of me for cho chopping this up into little functions. Instead, he's gonna be very embarrassed that I'm not gonna do that for the rest of this. I think basically probably the right thing to do, or not the right thing, but the thing I'm going to do is, you know, we'll just pass in a third argument called favorites. And essentially do some if then statements throughout our view list to make that work. But you know what, maybe this is a good stopping point. We're at the point now where we actually have our, um, our favorites. Well, how are we doing on time? 19 minutes. All right. Yeah, you know what? We're at a point where we can now view our favorites within our web app and that's pretty exciting. Um, and so yeah, we'll kind of finish up our refactoring in the next video and then maybe move on to some other things. So uh, thanks for staying around and we'll see you on the next episode of Firebase Semi Live.